Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll see how to configure wireless networks with a wireless LAN controller with a lab demo. So it's the same lab scenario as from the last video where I configured the switch. Now I'm going to configure all of the wireless network settings on the wireless LAN controller. We're going to configure a couple of different WLANs. So I'm going to have the corporate wireless network and also the guest WLAN as well. The corporate WLAN is for internal staff. So for them to log in, we're going to need to supply a username and password, and that is going to be authenticated by the Radius server here using 802.1x authentication. For guests, they don't need to enter a username and password. They just need to enter a pre-shared key. So for the guest network, that's going to be using WPA personal authentication, for the corporate network, that is going to be using WPA2 Enterprise. Corporate users will have access to all of the internal resources. So they're going to be assigned to the corporate VLAN and the corporate IP subnet. Guest users will be in a different guest VLAN and guest IP subnet, and they'll just have access to the internet. Okay, so let's get this all set up. So first off, I need to connect to the admin GUI on the wireless LAN controller. If I click on the wireless LAN controller and go into the config here in Packet Tracer and look at the management interface, you can see that it's already been given an IP address, 192.168.10.11. So when you're working on a real world wireless LAN controller, the first thing you need to do is go through the initial setup to give it an IP address. After that, when you're actually working on the wireless LAN controller, you're going to be working in the GUI. You can do configuration in the command line as well, but it's much easier to work in the GUI. That's what pretty much everybody does. But before you can connect to the GUI, it needs to have an IP address. So when you take a wireless LAN controller out of the box for the first time, you'll hook up to it with a console cable. And then at the command line that you get through the console connection, you'll go through the initial setup wizard. And that's where you configure the basic settings, such as the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. So for this lab demo, I've already done that. I've gone through the initial setup wizard at the command line just to get an IP address on the wireless LAN controller. Now that is done, I'll be able to connect to its admin GUI from my admin laptop here. So I will go on to my admin laptop. You can see I've gone to HTTPS 192.168.10.11 on the wireless LAN controller, and I've entered my username and password for management, and I'm going to log in. And this is going to land me on the dashboard. Okay, next, first thing I'm going to do is to configure my integration with the Radius server. So let's look back in the main packet tracer window and look on my radius server. I'll click on that. And if I go to the config, you can see that it's got IP address 192.168.10.10. And if I look at the services and then looking here at triple A, you can see that radius has been enabled. And I have added a username flatbox with the password flatbox2. And I've also done the radius server side configuration for integrating it with the wireless LAN controller. So I've added the wireless LAN controller here and I've specified its IP address is 192.168.10.11 and the shared key is flatbox1. So now I need to add the radius server on the wireless LAN controller. So let's do that. So back on my admin laptop, on the GUI for the wireless LAN controller, I'll go to security. Oh, so that's where I'm going to configure integration with triple A servers. And under triple A and radius and authentication, I will click on there. 
and I'm going to add a new server. So I click on new. The radius server IP address is 192.168.10.10. And the shared secret was flatbox1. So I will type it, that in and then click on apply up here in the top right. And that is my integration done now with my radius server. And I can see it in the main page for my authentication servers here. Okay, next thing that I'm going to do. So before I configure my WLANs, I need to get the global settings configured first that's why I, I configured the radius server another thing that i need to do is when wireless clients connect to those wlans we're going to need to get an ip address from dhcp we could use static ip addresses but much more likely we're going to be using dhcp there so we could use an external dhcp server but for this demo i'm going to be using the dhcp service on the wireless LAN controller. So I need to configure a DHCP scope for both the corporate and the guest WLANs. So for that, I go to controller and then internal DHCP server and DHCP scope. You can see there's already a default scope in here. I'm gonna click new to create a new one. And this first one, I will name it corporate to match the name of my VLAN and my WLAN. And then I click on it here to edit it. So that's just created it. To edit it, click on it again here. And the start address, I'm gonna use 192.168. My IP subnet for corporate was 192.168.22. And I'm gonna start giving out addresses beginning with 101. The last address, I'll use 192.168.22.254. The network, 192.168.22.0. The subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. The default router is my multi-layer switch at 192.168.22.1. And in a real-world environment, you would enter in the DNS details here as well. I'm not using DNS in my lab here, so I can leave that blank and click on apply. So that's gonna give out addresses to clients who connect to the corporate WLAN. I need to give addresses to the guest clients as well. So I'm gonna create another new scope. I will name this guest and click on apply. Click on it to edit it. And the starting address 192.168, the guest subnet is .23. I'll start with 101. The ending address 192.168.23.254. The network 192.168.23.0. Subnet mask 255.255.255.0. And the default router is 192.168.23.1. Okay, so that is my DHCP scopes done. Click on apply. I can see them there and I can see that the pools look good. Okay, next thing that I need to do is configure virtual interfaces on my wireless LAN controller. Again, one for each WLAN. Now, when I configure the virtual interfaces, I need to associate them with the physical port that is connected to the switch. So let's check and see what port that is. So I will click on ports. And then when the page loads, there I can see that the port is port one because i can see the link is up so it's port one so in my lab environment here i've just got one physical port connected into the switch in a real world environment you would want to use a lag link aggregation which is an ether channel to bundle multiple ports together to give you additional bandwidth okay so here i'm going to be using port one so now i can go to interfaces this is going to create virtual interfaces which are similar to an SVI, like interface VLAN that you would see on a switch. I have got my default interfaces in there already. I'm going to create a new one and I will name this corporate and the VLAN that this is in is VLAN 22, my corporate VLAN. And then click on apply. And then on the next page, I need to specify the physical port that this is going to be associated with, that this VLAN can be carried over. 
which was port 1. The VLAN identifier was 22. And I'm going to give this IP address 192.168.22.2 because my switch is using dot one. The subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. The default gateway for the subnet is 192.168.22.1. And then the primary DHCP server, well, I configured the DHCP scope here on my wireless LAN controller. So I will enter in the management address of my wireless LAN controller which is 192.168.10.11. So you can see here, when, when you configure a multi-layer switch, you're going to have your VLAN interfaces on there if it's acting as the default gateway. And on those VLAN interfaces, you're going to have the DHCP helper address so that the clients can get to the DHCP server. Well, we're doing the same thing here. So now when the wireless clients connect to the WLAN, they need to get access to their DHCP server. So that's why I had to configure the logical interface here, give it an IP address and specify the address of the DHCP server. Okay, so I have done that for the corporate network. I click on apply and it's going to say that changing the interface parameters can cause temporarily loss of connectivity. Well, I don't have any clients connected yet, so that's no problem. So I'll click on OK here. And then I can go back to the interfaces page again. I see my corporate interface is there. I need to create another new one for guest. So I'll click on new. I'll give this the name of guest. The VLAN ID is VLAN 23 for my guest network and click on apply. Then on the next page, I'm going to associate this with port number one. So both of my VLANs are going to be trunked over the same underlying physical port. The IP address here, 192.168.23.2, because the default gateway was dot one, I need to use something that's not used elsewhere. Subnet mask, 255.255.255.0, and the gateway is 192.168.23.1. And again, for both the corporate and the guest clients, they're both using the same DHCP server, which is here on the wireless LAN controller with the IP address 192.168.10.11. So I can click on apply there and click on OK again, and then click on interfaces. And there I can see I have got my interfaces configured. OK, so I've got my integration done with Radius Server. I've got my DHCP scopes configured. I've configured my logical interfaces so now I am ready to configure my wireless local area networks. So for that, I click on the WLANs tab, and then I am going to choose to create new and click go there. And then the type is WLAN. The profile name, again, I'm going to use the same naming convention. So I'm going to call this corporate. And the SSID is also going to be corporate. So you can use a different profile name in SSID. Normally, you want to keep these the same. It just makes things more logical, easier to see what's going on. The ID is just an index number. So it starts at one and goes up from there. So one is fine here. And I will click on apply. And then when this page loads, I can specify the settings for my WLAN. So first thing I need to do is make sure that it is associated with the corporate interface that I just created. So I'll click on the drop down here and it's going to be associated with corporate. So it's going to get those settings. It's going to get the correct DHCP scope. Click on there. And then I'm not going to enable it yet because I haven't configured the security. So I want to make sure that I don't have any clients connecting in here before I've configured the security settings. I do need to remember to come back here and enable it when I'm done though. Okay, so let's do the security. So I will click on security and then the layer two security, I will click on the drop down there and I'm going to configure this for 802.1x authentication. And you can see that that is an option, but on the wireless LAN controller, if you choose this, it's using 802.1x with the old WEP authentication, which we don't want to use anymore. So I'm going to use WPA and WPA2. So I select that. And you can see the 802.1x is an option underneath here. Okay, so I've gone WPA and WPA2. And then for the policy, I don't want WPA to be enabled. I just want WPA2. 
So I will click that and I want to use AES encryption, don't want to use TKIP, and I'm going to be using 802.1x for the authentication here. And then I also need to click on the AAA servers tab and see where my radius server is, click on the drop down here, and there I can see is the radius server that I added earlier. And select that, and then I am going to click on apply. So that is all of my settings done. And the thing I need to not forget, which is easy to forget, also click on enabled and apply that. Okay, so that is my Corporus WLAN configured. You see there's other settings in here as well, such as QoS policies, etc. Don't need to do any of those here. So now I'll go back to the main WLANs page again. And there is my corporate WLAN. I need to create my guest WLAN as well. So I'll go create new and click on go. I will give it the profile name guest and the SSID guest as well. It uses the next ID index number, which is two. I click on apply. And then on the next page, again, I haven't set this security yet, so I'm not gonna enable it yet. And the interface that this is associated with is my guest interface. Under the radio policy, this is where you can specify whether you want to have 802.11 AC or N or G and so on. That's where you can specify which of the standards there you want to have enabled for this WLAN. Okay, so next up, I need to do the security. I'll click on the drop down here. And again, I'm going to be using WPA and WPA2. But rather than 802.1x, here I am using a pre-shared key. I need to specify what the pre-shared key is. So I will enter that in the box here and then I can apply. Oh, I forgot to specify that it's WPA2 that I want to use here and AES. Okay, so I just selected that and now I should be able to click apply and this will work. Okay, so that's all good. Again, I need to remember to enable it. So I'll tick the enable checkbox and click on apply. And that is my WLANs now all configured. So last thing I need to do is actually check that it is working. But let's check the WLANs are there. So I'll just go back to the WLANs main page again. And there I can see there is corporate and guest. I can see guest is using a pre-shared key and corporate is using 802.1x authentication. Okay, so let's go back to the packet tracer main window. You can see I've got a corporate laptop and a guest laptop here. So to test this is working, I'm going to go to the corporate laptop. I'm going to go to the config. And for my wireless interface in here, I'm going to say that I want to connect to the corporate SSID. And I'm using WPA2. See, there's WPA2 and WPA2 pre-shared key. Well, I'm using WPA2 Enterprise, so this is the option here. Again, it's not 802.1x, which is the legacy way of doing it. It's WPA2. And then in here, I specify my user ID, which was Flatbox, and the password is Flatbox2. So that is the user credentials that were configured on the Radius server. So I've done that, and then I'll just click out of here to make it take effect and go back again and go back to the wireless interface. I might need to just give this a minute or two to get the IP address from DHCP. So while that is going on, let's configure the guest laptop as well. I'll click on that and then go to the configuration, go to my wireless network card. The SSID that I'm going to connect to is guest. And this is with WPA2 pre-shared key. So I don't get the granularity of a username and password. It's just the same password that's being used for everybody. And that was Flatbox3 that I used there, right? Can click out of there to make sure that that's taking effect and go back to the config. That all looks good. Actually, what did I do for the corporate laptop? Did I put in the wrong password there? Let's double check. No, it's password Flatbox2, so that's good. Yeah, that's fine. And I can see it has now got an IP address. So that looks good. So if I look back in the main packet tracer window, 
from this indicators here, I can see that they are both connected to the wireless network. And if I wa was on a real world wireless LAN controller, I could go back into the dashboard there and I would be able to see information about those clients. Okay, so that was it. That's how to configure wireless networking with the wireless LAN controller in a Cisco environment. And that wraps up the wireless section. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.